Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah, if you're new here. And in today's video, uh, we're not gonna talk about my middle part. In today's video, we are going to be talking about The Bone Orchard by Sarah A. Mueller. This is Sarah Mueller's debut novel. This is an adult fantasy standalone story. This that just released in the beginning of 2022 and I finally got my hands on it. So in this video I'm going to be giving you a plot summary and a review from me personally as to how I felt about the book but this also I want to kind of jump off of this book and use this book as an example to talk about a discussion topic um, that's been on my mind since I read this book uh, and that is representation is not a spoiler and my thoughts and opinions on that topic. The plot of this book is about our main character, Charm. Charm works at Orchard House. She is the proprietor of this gentleman's club and she is a sex worker for the emperor of this empire. And she has other sex workers beneath her that run the gentleman's club. And in the beginning of the book, Charm is called to the bedside of the Emperor and he has been poisoned and there is no cure. And he tasks her with solving the murder as well as killing the perpetrator and ensuring none of his sons end up on the throne. So he has four sons and they are all inept or mad or violent in some way. They are incapable of ruling the empire. He wants Charm to find a suitable replacement for him. That is the synopsis of the book. This book mostly focuses on Charm and her political machinations as she is trying to figure out the murder as well as politically maneuvering the four, uh, the four heirs to the throne to kind of go after each other. Um, since she is a sex worker, she's not directly in the palace. So she's trying to kind of pit them against each other. The So that's the overall plot and in my opinion this is not a spoiler but a big part of this book is also an exploration of charm and her trauma and how her trauma has manifested itself into multiple personalities. Now I don't view that as a spoiler. I uh, chapter one of this book made it very clear that Charm had a multiple or an altar inside her, especially uh, known as the lady, but this altar uh, multiple personality also manifests, uh, manifests itself outside of her body as well. So she has altars that she has put into bodies outside of herself, if that makes sense. So there's several fantasy elements. There's um, that bone magic that I was talking about where Charm is able to take a, a part of herself and put it into a homegrown body that she grow she grew. And there's also this concept of mind locks. So uh, people in this world can have empathic and telepathic abilities and they've invented a magical mechanical device that's implanted in the temple that will help prevent the telepath from going mad, but also as a way of controlling the individual. So if someone is the key holder of their mind lock, they can give them orders and they are forced to do them. That's why Charm takes on the task from the Emperor because she doesn't really have a choice. She, the Emperor holds her mind lock key and she basically is forced to do his final order. So those are like the fantasy elements. So that's what this book is about. It is a standalone, which I really appreciate an adult fantasy standalone nowadays. It's really nice to break up amongst all of the epic series I've been reading lately. And now I'm going to tell you what I thought about the book and how it was executed. So I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I was really quite enjoying it and I really thought the ending was very, very solid. Uh, a good little bit of a twist at the end that I didn't see coming as well as very action-packed at the end. Trigger warnings for this book. <laughs> First and foremost, we have to talk about uh, sexual abuse um, and 
you know, trauma surrounding that. But most of the sexual abuse happens off page, but we hear about it and we see the after effects of it. So that is very disturbing in this book. There's also a threat of sexual abuse. There's also torture and violence in this book. Uh, not a ton, but there is a few scenes towards the end that are quite intense and violent. We also have suicide. That is a, a trigger warning I really want to put into this section. Tr uh, trigger warning for suicide, suicidal thoughts and ideations, and suicidal acts we see on page. So be careful with this one, truly. I, I don't think it's the most like dark fantasy book I've ever read, but it does tackle some of these really intense themes and topics, so just be careful with yourself with this one. Like I said, overall I did enjoy this book. Um, a few things that I had an issue with, so the main political players in this book, I had a hard time differentiating between the brothers, the heirs to the throne that we were trying to like overthrow, um, their voices were very similar so for me it was hard that was the hardest part was differentiating some of the side characters charm and her you know sex workers at the club i was you know i could really clearly see their personalities and i could differentiate them very easily but the side characters and the political players i had a hard time differentiating so people call this book confusing and i agree and disagree with them in some aspects. I think Charm and her alters are not confusing at all. It's very obvious to me what's going on there, but I do think some of the political maneuvering was a little glossed over or it was mentioned in passing and that just, and since that's the main plot, it was a little bit hard to grasp what was going on. By the end, you know, midway point to the end, I was starting to kind of see the pieces and see what Charm was doing, but it's not very clear in the text. I'm a political intrigue lady, so the the confusion was fine for me. I was, I was along for the ride and willing to wait it out, and I'm glad I did. I don't think this was a new favorite of mine, and one of the reasons I think so is because I had a hard time specifically with one of Charm's alters. I just had a really hard time emotionally connecting to Charm. I, I felt bad for her and I, I could understand her trauma and I get it, but there was something about that one alter that really just threw me off. That made me not, I, I was trying really hard to forgive her and it was hard. So this just wasn't as emotionally evocative I was hoping for to, uh, for this type of story. You know, an exploration of trauma and grief as to why someone would create alters, why someone would have like disassociative identity disorder. Um, that could have been really emotionally impactful and I just kind of fell slightly flat for me. So that's why this is a 3.5 out of 5 stars. But now let's get into the discussion portion. And this discussion is my opinion on spoilers and what counts as a spoiler. And in my personal opinion, representation is not a spoiler. Why is that in this video? Well, I've talked about it a little bit in my plot summary and in my review, is that Charm has alters. Charm has multiple personalities. She's either a multiple being or someone who has something along the lines of disassociative identity disorder. And to me, it is very clear from chapter one or two that something is going on with Charm and she has someone called the Lady inside of her that is another person or another personality inside her. So from the beginning of the book, it is clear what her condition is, if you will. And I'm trying not to get angry because I've only seen maybe two or three reviews of this book by other individuals and they don't talk about Charm's Alters. And I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt and think and say that maybe they thought that this was a spoiler, but since it happened so early in the book, I definitely don't think it was a spoiler. Imagine someone who has D 
DID, disassociative, disassociative identity disorder, or someone who is a multiple being self um, coexisting with multiple personalities within them and not knowing that that's what this book has in it. None of the reviews that I've seen, even like scrolling through a few of the Goodreads written reviews, I haven't seen much discussion at all about charms, multiple personalities. And I think that that's something that should be recognized uh, as we talk about this book. I also think people are, are saying that this book is confusing and I think what they mean by that is they're referring to the multiple personalities. And I disagree with that piece and I don't want to put words in people's mouths but I don't think it's hard to understand where Charm is coming from, from the text itself, as to why she has alters, how this happened, and it's just being manifested in a fantasy way. I don't know, I don't think that that is confusing. I don't think a disability or a condition like that is confusing. And I think it's just a lack of understanding and a lack of identification with something that's maybe so different from your own experience that people think that that is a spoiler and that that is just something strange and different from them. Like I said, I'm trying to give these other reviewers the benefit of the doubt, but that's why I wanted to talk about it in this video, talking about this book specifically. And for my personal opinion, I think I would rather be spoiled for a plot point then not know a book has some kind of disability or some type of disability representation in it. As I keep having to say this, but as a disabled person myself, I don't look disabled, uh, but neither does a person with multiple personalities. They don't look disabled. They don't look like they have a condition, but they do. So as someone who is has an invisible disability, I would have loved to know going into this book that that's what it had. Because it, it I, I can imagine someone with this condition wanting to pick this up so badly. You know what I mean? Another thing to note is there is a side character with albinism in this book. And this I do have a little bit of a qualm with. <laughs> um, the text doesn't reveal she has al albinism until the end or at least it's very unclear. It just talks about her having red eyes. And to me, in a fantasy setting, that doesn't necessarily indicate albinism. I just thought that that was a manifestation of her being in a, she was a, a grown person. So she had, um, she was one of Charm's alters and was grown a body. So I just thought it was part of the magical process that she just came out with red eyes. But no, in the end, it is clearly stated she has albinism. So I think this is a fault of the author for not making this clear in the beginning of the book when describing her name is Payne. Payne has albinism. And again, it's a part of representation. Someone with, and I think, in my opinion, Payne is one of the most loving and sweet characters in the entire book. And it's from everything I know, um, from listening to people with albinism and their voices is that it's hard to find positive representation of albinism. Albinism is also often portrayed as negative and as like a villain, <laughs> you know, uh, or it's other, it's strange, it's a bad thing. And I think everyone deserves to have positive representation of whatever disability or whatever their gender identity or sexuality is. I think that kind of sums up all of the points that I had. I just, without repeating myself, but this is the last time I will reiterate this. One, this book has representation for multiple personalities or someone with DID. And this book also has representation for albinism as well as other disabilities and deformities. There are characters who are missing have grotesque hands, there's a blind character, and in all the reviews I've seen, none of that is talked about. And this, I think, is an overall 
problem that I've noticed with reviewers. There are some reviewers who are quite good at disclosing this type of information, but it's always something that could be improved upon, including myself. You know, there are things that I miss too all the time. Nobody's perfect, but I think it's something that we could use as a point of discussion as well as a point for improvement. That's really all I want to say. That is that is the extent of my discussion. You know my opinion now. What are your thoughts and feelings? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Can you think of other examples of representation used as one, a plot device, and two, people think that it is a spoiler to reveal that information? Do you have any examples? I can think of a few off the top of my head in this exact moment, but let's continue this discussion in the comments down below as I would love to have a chat with you guys about this book and this topic. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in another video of mine very soon. Bye!